transformers have long been used in natural language processing. However, because of the high computational requirements, they couldn't be employed in computer vision. In this work, the Google Research Brain team developed a pretty creative approach to utilize them in computer vision, which is extremely important to know because they now dominate many applications in computer vision and achieve higher accuracies than CNNs. So let's just see how it's working. And by the way, if you have absolute no idea of how transformers work, you just look at the description of this video. I put a link of one of the lectures in computer vision of University of Michigan, which is well explained. One of the initial ideas for combining transformers with computer vision is that we just need to take a look at the image pixels and consider a separate token for every pixel that we have in the input image. But the problem of doing this is that for a regular sized image, which is 2024 by 2024, we have around 50,000 pixels. So we need to have around 50,000 tokens, which is a lot. I mean, comparing to the NLP tasks that we have a sentence, we represent each word as a token, and we do not have any sentence that has 50,000 words, which makes this complex. And to address this issue, the others proposed another way, which is dividing the input image into what's so-called patches. And these patches, they are all equal sized, and the possible patch sizes are 8x8, 16x16, and 32x32. Obviously, as we decrease the patch size, we will end up having more tokens, meaning that the self-attentions within transformers they can pay more attention to the input image, and as a result, we will have higher accuracy. But a question that we might have now is that what's the problem of using 8x8 pack size when they are having the highest accuracy? And why don't we use something smaller, like 4x4, or 2x2, or even 1x1, which is one pixel as a token? The problem is that the self-attentions within transformers, they are having quadratic complexity, both in memory and computation. So for an 8x8 patch size, we need to have something like 36 gigabytes of GPU, which is a lot nowadays. So we have a trade-off between memory and accuracy, and for that purpose, the researchers usually use 16x16 patch size. But enough of these hardware details, and now let's just dive into what's happening in the Vision Transformer. As we remember, the input of the transformers are sequences of tokens, and tokens are vectors, but now we have patches instead of vectors. So the first thing we need to do is that we need to make them flatten, and assuming that the input patches are 16 by 16, we will end up having a 256 dimensional vector. But apparently 256 dimensional is not enough, so they pass it through a linear projection, which is just a simple matrix multiplication, and they will output Z vectors, which they have higher dimensions. For example, 766 or so on. And as we remember, one of the problems of transformers is that they are permutation equivariants, meaning that they do not care about the order of the input. But for our task, we care about the order of the input. And for example, for this input image, if I just shuffle the patches, we will end up seeing an image that even for us as humans, it is hard to understand what's happening in this image. I mean, now that we have high patch sizes, it is easy to get a sense of what's happening. But for 16 by 16 patch size, it's almost impossible. So to solve this problem, the others suggested adding what's so-called position embeddings which is just some randomly initialized vectors that we just need to add to our Z vectors and these vectors are actually learnable throughout the network so we can learn them with backpropagation. But this is not enough and inspired by BERT paper which is not necessarily for us to know about the details we just need to add another vector which, which is called learnable class token. This Z0 token, it is also learnable, and we just need to have that as our input. And then we have our transformer encoder, which is something that we usually have, which is just a layer normalization, followed by multi-head attention, 
and skip connection, layer normalization again, MLP, and then skip connection. And we repeat the same procedure L times until we reach the final output. But now that when we reach the final output, one thing that we need to know is that for our case that we have from Z0 until Z9, we have 10 inputs, so we need to have 10 outputs. But we do not need to care about the output of Z1 and Z9. I mean, for the final output, we do not need to care about them. And we only care about the output of Z0, and we pass it to an MLP head, which is just a classifier that outputs some class scores for every category that we have. And basically, by just knowing those scores, we can do the image classification. But one thing we need to know is that when we throw away the output of Z1 until Z9, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are useless. Because as we know, transformer is actually a stack of L transformer encoders. And for the intermediate encoders, we need the output of Z1 until Z9, so as to consider them as our input to our next transformer encoder. But for the final output, it's not necessary, and we can just do not compute them at all. And yeah, that's the whole idea. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until the next video, goodbye.